first of all, and this was my response to her, one is that love has boundaries. Love is not this like free for all where we just become doormats and where we just allow people to walk all over us and use us and abuse us and mistreat us. That's not love. There are times in a marriage and in a relationship where you are going to have to put up some pretty strict boundaries depending on what has happened. In her case, her husband betrayed her trust. So obviously, there has to be some sort of protective mechanisms around the relationship, not as a punishment, but to protect not only her, but to protect the relationship, to protect the marriage. And that's what we're going to get into today. You know, I can talk about this topic from a very personal point because I have struggled with fear in lots of areas of my life, in my marriage, as a parent, as a mother, you know, as a friend, I've struggled with fear in a lot of ways for a lot of years. And I remember there was this one point in time, I remember like it was yesterday, I was sitting on my couch at our old house and I was in the middle of my first book writing project. And I started thinking about all the ways that this book project was going to fail. What if nobody buys the book? What if I suck as a writer? What if, what if, what if, what if? And it was so severe, y'all, that I didn't write for like weeks. I just couldn't find it in me. It wasn't writer's block. It was fear that had immobilized me because I began to dwell on the what ifs. And maybe you're not a writer, but surely you can identify with some point in your life where you have allowed fear to immobilize you. And that is how it damages marriages. That is how fear can literally destroy marriages. So many times people think that marriages are destroyed because of some huge breach, some big violation, infidelity, abuse, and those big ones obviously do happen. But do you know what destroys more marriages? Fear. There are so many marriages that end in divorce and nothing, quote, bad happened, but people were so guarded. They had their walls up. They were so afraid that they never really allowed their spouses in. And that really is the antithesis of intimacy. A strong, healthy marriage cannot survive without intimacy. Yet, intimacy requires vulnerability. Intimacy requires courage. Fear is the opposite. Fear is going to keep you feeling like my DM uh, friend here, that you have to protect yourself. And this is the deal, that if you spend so much time protecting yourself, then you're never going to be able to let love in. You're never going to be able to actually fully love because in the back of your mind, you're thinking, I'm not safe. And if we're not safe, we're not going to give our all. We're not going to give 100% of who we are to someone that we do not feel safe with. So I want to just go back in time a little bit to when Sean and I were going through our season of infidelity. I talk about this a lot because I can identify with so many couples and I get, y'all, I get emails, I get messages from couples, couples that I coach who are really actively trying to recover from infidelity. And do you know what is at the scene of every single crime? Fear. And I'm just tired of fear robbing relationships. I'm tired of marriages that are on the right path And they get sideswiped because of this fear. When Sean and I were going through our our season, and if you don't know our story, I've talked about it extensively on this podcast, but you can go back to episode two, where we talk about rebuilding trust, rebuilding us. I'm sorry, it's actually episode three, where we talk about our story. And I remember very vividly when we had made the decision, you know, Sean was repentant, I was forgiving, and we were walking the steps out, like we were walking it out, right? And I was just so inundated with checking his phone all the time. I just had to know like what was going on, what was going on, what was going on. And it became like an addiction. Like whenever I would see that phone, it was like, I had to check, I had to check, I had to check. And what I realized is that that was torment. I was literally tormenting myself because what if, what if he's not really sorry? What if he's really cheating? What if he's, what if there's somebody else? What if, what if, what, I mean, and then the wild, crazy thoughts, right? Like, what if there's a child out there? What if, oh my gosh, what if somebody knocks on my doorstep and they're this love child that he had out there from two, three years ago? And if you spend a lot of time in the what ifs, your mind is going to go off the rails and it will be tormenting for you. 
Now, maybe your marriage hasn't been through infidelity, or maybe you really haven't even been through a, quote, serious infraction in your marriage, but there are other fears that you have. As parents, I think we can all relate. What if, what if something happens to my child? You know, we hear about these school shootings and immediately I want to go pull my kids out of school every single time it happens. I'm like, nope, I'm homeschooling. That's it. Fear immobilizes us and it gets us to the place where we become so anxious in our thoughts that we can't function. And I think that it's one of the enemy's biggest tactics. It's one of his greatest schemes that he uses to keep us out of joy, which we just talked about a couple episodes, right? With Nicole Jacobs Meyer, we talked about finding joy. Well, fear, when you're struggling with fear, you can't live in joy. You can't live in peace. And this is why the enemy works over time to keep us in fear so that he can keep us from feeling that joy of the Lord that is our strength, so that he can keep us from feeling that peace that passes all understanding. So how do we overcome fear? Well, first of all, let's talk about the fact that fear is natural. Fear is a natural reaction to the unknown. There's nothing wrong with that natural kind of pause. You're you're going into an unknown environment and you're feeling fear. You're like, okay, I don't know what to expect here. I don't know what's about to go down. And so sometimes fear can be protective. If you are in, um, let's say, a, a, a rough area, a neighborhood that you've never been in, and it's a neighborhood that's known for high crime, you would kind of be foolish to just, you know, get out of the car and waltz all around and leave your doors unlocked. There are some fears that are kind of common sense. So fear can protect us in certain cases, but then fear can actually make us prejudiced in other cases. So same neighborhood, same situation, same scenario, you see someone who now your brain, your mind has been conditioned by society to believe is a danger, and then you become prejudiced to that person. That's when fear becomes wrong. Now, let's, let's, again, bring this back into the context of marriage here, okay? You've heard about infidelity. You've heard about adultery. You've heard about abuse. You've heard about addictions. You've heard about these things that destroy marriages. So, Most of us have put some sort of protective barrier, i.e. boundaries, i.e. wisdom, i.e. accountability, right? Most of us have some sort of protective barrier around. Hopefully you do. I mean, maybe you're listening to me. You're like, oh, my gosh, I don't. Well, friend, let's, let's talk about that, okay? But let's assume that many of us have some sort of protective boundaries around our marriages, all right? Now, if we actually run up into a trigger, Maybe something happened from a prior relationship or maybe your best friend just found out her, her, her husband was cheating on her. So now you're all triggered and afraid. Then you're going to become prejudiced to your spouse's behavior, to their advances, to what's going on. And this is the thing y'all fear is also an acronym. It stands for false evidence appearing real. That word appearing is key. Think about every little kid who's afraid of the boogie monster, right? Is that a real fear? No, but it sure enough appears real to them. So fear is not always bad. Fear can be protective, but we have to be careful that we don't allow our protection to become prejudiced. 